Hello everyone, my name is Trevor and in this video we're going to be talking about the differences between ASD and LRFD design methodologies. So let's get into it. Uh, when we look at ASD versus LRFD, ASD is going to stand for Allowable Stress or Allowable Strength Design. It's an older design methodology but it's still used today. And when we talk about using ASD, we want to use service level loads um, to analyze our structures. So when you have a 50 pounds per square foot number or a live load that you find in ASCE or anything like that, that's a service level load. That is what's being analyzed with, an, with the ASD design methodology. So conversely for LRFD, that stands for load and resistance factor design. It is a more recent design methodology and it's uh, more common. You'll find it more often um, in building design and a lot of other um, different industries as well. And this is going to use ultimate level loads. So later we'll look at some load combinations, but uh, basically what this means is it takes the service level loads and multiplies them by um, certain load factors greater than one to achieve a ultimate uh, limit state or ultimate level of loading. So let's take a look at our ASD and LRFD equilibrium equations. You can see that there's some similarities between both. Both sides um, in LRFD and ASD have RA, this is our required strength. Similarly with RN, this is our nominal strength of our member or our material. And then the way um, that they differ is for LRFD we have a design factor phi here which is multiplied by RN and on the ASD side we have omega which is uh, divided by uh, on the RN side and this is also a factor of safety. So you can see these are the descriptions of those um, things here and we'll, we'll go into the factor of safety and design factor here in the next slide. So let's take a look at the differences between the factor of safety and the design factor. The factor of safety is going to be used kind of as a buffer in ASD um, for uncertainty and, and inconsistency, inconsistencies in the design but however this is only going to depend on the type of load um, that's being applied. So the factor of safety is really only going to change whether or not it's a shear, mo a shear load, an axial load, or a moment. Conversely, if we go to the other side here for LRFD, uh, the design factor, it's very situationally specific. So what we mean by that is uh, based on research and, and testing, um, specific design factors, and there's many, many, many of them, uh, uh, they're determined based on material, uh, failure criteria, load type, um, things like that. And they can also uh, account for things uh, that happen in the installation. So um, inconsistencies in human error, stuff like that. That Some of this can actually be accounted for in the design factor. And let's take a look at this graph here. We have a load versus displacement graph of a steel member for the same load. And we can see that at this load, this is just an arbitrary graph, but at this load we have Rn. This is the maximum allowable strength, or the, the maximum strength of the material for the entire graph. So this is the absolute maximum uh, strength the material has. If you look at the ASD level down here, this Rn divided by omega, we see that it's in the elastic zone. That is the goal of the ASD design philosophy. It is to buffer this down far enough so that um, your strength is, is elastic, so that you're not breaching into this um, per permanent deformation zone. Whereas if we look at the LRFD case, our LRFD strength of the, of, the, of the same member at the same load is higher and it's deforming. And we see that because Rn is multiplied by just a single number, um, that design factor phi, which ranges from 0 0.6 to 0 0.9. So the, the drop in strength isn't as, isn't as much between Rn uh, and uh, the ASD strength between uh, Rn and the LRFD strength. So the way that we can account for this being higher and actually permanently deforming because we wouldn't want uh, to design our structure at this level for this load because you're seeing that you're designing every member um, to permanently deform and that obviously would not be good. So how can we account for this? This is where uh, those increased load factors come into play for our load combinations and we'll see that in the, in the upcoming slide here. So let's take a look at our load combinations. If we look at a few example ASD load combinations, we can see um, that service level. And if you haven't seen these before, uh, you'll notice that you, there's only a 1.0 factor on the majority of, the uh, of majority of these loads. Um, some of these loads 
uh, load factors are being reduced. That is accounting for the probability that they're all going to happen at the same time. Um, but we can see that for some of the majority of the cases here, 1.0 times the dead load plus 1.0 times the live load, that is the service level that we're talking about. That is the actual level of load that we're applying to the structure and analyzing it, analyzing it for. If we look on this side, we can see the increases um, in the load factors. So now we have a bunch of different load factors that are higher than one. So this is what we're doing to account for that ultimate level state. Um, again, this is a service level state, and this would be an ultimate level state. So we're trying to um, increase the amount of, of load that's being applied with these load factors um, to get us to that ultimate state so that um, if something were to happen, uh, our, our structure is going to survive. So the worst case scenario here out of these load combinations, and these are just some examples, uh, that would be the ultimate level state. The one thing with LRFD is because you're evaluating, again, the ultimate state, I keep saying that, but um, where L with LRFD, you also need to evaluate um, for the service level condition. So you're kind of doing two things at once with, with LRFD design. You're also accounting for some of the things that you see in ASD uh, because this is for kind of to account for a one-time event that could bring down the structure. And you also, but you also need to evaluate um, the long-term lifespan of your structure. So also being able to evaluate some of these service level cases so that um, your, member, your members or, or structure are good against deflection, cracking, uh, things like that. Things that are more serviceability related and not uh, an ultimate level or a single event. So what does this mean? Uh, you can use ASD, you can use LRFD. Both design methodologies are still in good standing. But a good way to distinguish them is with ASD, if the loads are are very well known and there's no uncertainties in what's being applied to the actual structure, ASD design is usually going to be more efficient. Conversely, when there's uncertainties in design, uh, especially with um, some of the more dynamic loads, such as wind, earthquake, snow, rain, etc., um, that is where LRFD is going to be more efficient and probably um, you know, more useful. And that's kind of why LRFD is more common is because in most cases, you can't really account for those dynamic loads. And that's why we're seeing uh, an increase in use in this uh, design uh, philosophy. So if you enjoyed that video, make sure to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Also make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook. We hope to see you on the platform soon.